Hi, I'm Ravi Freeman, and excited to talk about some work that we're doing at the Mount Sinai Health System, ways that we're developing products really aimed at patient care quality and elevating safety across our hospitals and across our health system. And I'll talk a bit about um, how NLP and, and our partnership with John Snow Labs as well is helping support that goal. Just really briefly, a little bit about me. Um, so I'm our system vice president over clinical innovation and our CNIO. Uh, so I lead three teams, uh, a team that supports our portfolio of digital products. So that includes our patient app, um, our clinical data science team. And I'll be talking about the work we're doing today and our nursing informatics program. So we have nurses embedded across our hospitals and system service lines that serve as the translators between our technology teams and the clinical workforce. Um, some other things I do chair the data science committee for the ANA, we represent over 4 million nurses uh, in the United States. Um, I did my master's in analytics at NYU Stern. Um, I teach there and my doctoral work um, that I'm doing at Yale is focused on ways we can use AI to reduce health disparities. Specifically, my area of interest is for colorectal screening and looking at at-risk populations and how we can do a better job at connecting them to care. Um, and I am the father of a 10 year old named Cooper. Uh, he's a French bulldog. And so I thought I would uh, bring his photo into the presentation here today. He's my work from home uh, buddy the days that I work remote. So everything I'm sharing today is on behalf of a whole team. I like to say that data science is a team sport. So we have um, a leadership team and a group of data scientists and engineers. And we work together to build these products and partner with clinicians and stakeholders from across our enterprise to solve for some of the biggest challenges that we have in healthcare. And so some of the ways that our team, Clinical Data Science, is able to add value across our health system includes creating tools that help with proactive monitoring of our patients. Um, when we can do that well, there are financial incentives. Um, we look at ways we can improve workflows and prioritize. Um, and then we also help with evaluation when our health system may look at third party tools and we want to make sure that they're safe to use for patient care, that we understand their performance before it ever reaches um, a patient. And so these are some of the ways as a team that we're adding value across our health system. Just wanted to speak briefly about the platform because we have built out our own structure, uh, infrastructure here to support our analytics ambitions. Um, so we use our, we tap into the streaming data channels that are coming from our medical records. So we use Epic across our system. We're on one build um, from our ADT fees, lab systems, from devices. So wearable devices, um, those come streaming across our gateway. Um, we use MongoDB as our data lake and all of our streaming services are running on Apache Spark. And so um, we started with just the structured uh, EMR data in our early days. Um, in every case, we're generating some sort of predictive score, usually a top 10 feature set. And then we interface that data back either into the EMR. We can do things like send it to our mobile apps, send it to voice over IP devices that our um, nursing team and provider teams wear. Called, we use this little badge called Valsera that you see there in the bottom right corner, um, and also with our command center. So in the majority of our use cases, we're trying to create this um, closed loop bi-directional communication with our end users. So we're sending some sort of uh, message uh, or prediction and they're taking some sort of action and sending us back feedback. And we use that continuous feedback loop, which I'll talk about a little bit later to help optimize the work that we're doing. So I'll talk a little bit about the products, the roadmap, um, and then how we're working towards really moving to uh, multimodality. And so we've built out a whole portfolio. Um, we're over 30 products at this point um, of, of tools that we're using across our six hospitals. And so I'll just give a couple of examples of um, tools that we've built and deployed. We have a malnutrition AI tool that tells our dietary teams, our nutrition registered nutritionists, who to see across the health system. Um, and that allows us to really help the team prioritize the patients that they're visiting. And we've seen a real impact in terms of our ability to help get the right resource to the right patient 
at the right time. Um, some other pro um, problems that we set out to solve for, I'll talk today a little bit about how we're predicting hospital onset delirium. And that's a real challenge for healthcare organizations where patients, when they're admitted to the hospital, can get confused. And um, we have some tools to help support what's called our hospital delirium program and um, make sure that um, we can get, for example, in this case, our nurse practitioner team to the bedside to care for patients. Um, we also have worked on things like discharge planning. Um, we've tapped into the streaming data coming off our ventilators, and we did a lot of that during the pandemic. Um, we have some tools around understanding patients' experience of care um, and some work that we've done in oncology. And so uh, I often get asked, you know, what do these tools look like in use? And so I want to take you uh, on a quick tour around our hospitals and give you a chance to see what these tools look like in practice um, on the front lines out there. Mount Sinai is bringing data science to the front lines of healthcare. Well, what does that mean to us? Information just tends to sit in repositories and it's not living, it's not breathing. We have our data scientists looking at the incredible amount of data that we store from our electronic health records and other sources. And we're creating, in a very rapid fashion, tools that can make the world safer for our patients. We're trying to really push predictions to the frontline providers at the point of care. What we've done is built a number of algorithms that are trying to predict potential problems with patients or predict patients' conditions. What it does is identify where the patients fall within this algorithm. And if a patient's at risk for fall, the number is actually highlighted in yellow. You can also hover over that score and be able to see the exact risk factors for each particular patient in that moment. Malnutrition has a major impact on patient care. And so I can look at that tool and it helps me figure out of all the patients that I haven't seen so far yet on my unit, who's most likely to benefit from a nutrition visit and who's most likely to have a major nutrition problem. I'll get an alert on my phone saying this patient has 65% chance of deteriorating in the next six hours. And we have six hours ahead of time to stabilize that patient with this technology, you are improving survival. It is absolutely a game changer. What we're able to do with our machine learning models is pick up these small signals that are happening that a human would never be able to pick up. We're creating not just technology, but technology that is accessible and usable for the healthcare delivery professionals. That's the vision as we go into the future. So there you heard it from our team members who are in the frontline team who are working with these tools and got a little glimpse of you know what they look like in practice. And so to dive a little deeper into that, um, as I mentioned, talking about our infrastructure, we run all of our data on our own um, infrastructure. Um, we're an Azure shop. So as a health system, we use uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, we use Databricks on Azure and we run our models and we're able to then send that information to EMR. So you're seeing here just an example from nutrition. You heard from Alana, one of our registered dietitians. Um, and so at our hospitals across our health system, um, when the nutritionists are logging into Epic, they're seeing this on their patient list. They're able to hover over and see the top 10 features and then we'll color code it. So, and we'll have a threshold for the patients that um, they're expected to see for that shift. Um, after they um, visit the patient and, and do their documentation, we get essentially a thumbs up or thumbs down that yes, we got it right, this patient's well nourished or no, you know, in this use case, um, not at this time. And we use that information to uh, train our models. So this is just showing uh, going from version 1.0 to 2.0. This was a classic just EMR structured data model. We look at our performance for all of our tools across our hospital. So this is just looking at across, you know, the receiver operator curve across our six sites. Um, we put together, you know, all the standard model evaluation metrics and have some dashboards that we update um, daily <clears throat> to see the performance across the hospitals. So one way, it's one way that we can understand, you know, when we have those models out there in the wild, what are they doing? How are they performing? Uh, what does that look like? 
And so this was our approach for our early set of products. We took that structured EMR data, where it worked very well with solving our initial use cases around patient deterioration, around falls, around malnutrition, and a few others. And But we knew that to solve for more interesting problems and to continue to iterate and improve and create better versions of our models that we had to, we need to do more. And so um, the team has been working on, and we now are, have deployed, you know, a number of models where we're bringing in um, multiple data sets and multiple data assets. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And our vision is really to be able to pull in, not just the structured data notes, things like waveforms, but omics and imaging to bring that together to create multimodal products and then um, use our best practices around user experience and experience-led design to have build these into workflows in a way that they are seamlessly integrated. And I would say that probably 90% or more of our energy goes into that you know, user-led design and change management and workflow um, parts of these projects. And that's where you know, in, from my perspective, um, many of the efforts can succeed or fail. Um, it's really how you can embed it into workflows for our frontline team and ensure that we're capturing their voice as we design these tools and that they're uh, fitting as seamlessly as possible. And so that's uh, the direction we're going for multimodality. And so um, starting with NLP, where we can take our classic structured data models and add natural language processing on our notes. So things like path re pathology reports, radiology, progress notes um, of all types. I'll give some examples um, of what that looks like along with things like imaging. And so uh, pulling in imaging, one of the um, projects underway is to help identify when patients are ready to come off the ventilator. And so we can tap into those pictures of the lungs uh, when we do the regular um, chest x-rays of patients who are intubated or uh, on a ventilator and use that information to help uh, improve the model. This picture here was an example from some work we did during the pandemic to use uh, chest x-ray to identify patients who are positive, um, tested positive for COVID. So we have a, a amazing imaging research team here also that we partner with um, for these efforts. We also have built a toolkit to help bring products uh, from bench to bedside. And so, uh, as a clinical data science team, we really focus on tools that will get operationalized and used. But we have an what we've done over the in recent years has been able to partner with researchers who they may have the ability to build out a model, but they may not have the team and infrastructure resources and engineers to actually bring it to life. So we've had a number of use cases where research labs are able to throw the model over the fence to our team, and we'll configure it. We'll help with silent pilot prospective validation, active pilot, and aspects of the workflow development that you know are so key to bringing these tools to life. So given uh, our focus today is NLP, I want to give an example for some work we're doing to predict hospital onset delirium um, and acknowledge our data scientists working on this project, our senior data scientist, Fu Yan Cheng, and our director of data science, Dr. Arash Kia. Um, and so, Everything today is on behalf of the entire team, um, but I did want to highlight this one use case because I think it illustrates how we can add in um, NLP to really enhance the work that we have underway. And so in this use case, um, we have across our hospitals, a team of nurse practitioners. Um, we have a lead physician, Dr. Joseph Friedman, who run our hospital delirium program. And the goal is to proactively come in and intervene with patients who are at high risk, to, who are either delirious or at high risk to become delirious. And we had a standard tool. There's a standard tool used called the CAM, the confusion assessment method. Um, and about two years ago, we deployed a structured EMR data model um, to help the delirium program really prioritize the patients that they're going to go in and screen for delirium. And so our goal with this project was to add in NLP so we can have our normal structured EMR model and fuse that with the NLP model and create something that's higher performing. So in this case, we were pulling in um, notes. 
So Clarity is the operation is the reporting database of Epic. Um, we pull in the care notes, so notes that the nursing team is writing, um, progress notes from our residents, from our fellows, um, from our attendings, and that's what we use for our sampling. Um, so we do our, our pre-processing and processing. Um, we then will split, you know, into a 70-30 test train. Um, and what we saw with the NLP model alone is that we can have a, a, a so-so model when it comes to just NLP without any other structured data from the EMR. Um, and so the holdout performance um, you can see here, um, the precision accuracy, the AUC 0.72. This is actually a little lower than the EMR uh, structured data model, but we had a hypothesis that we can combine these two together to create a more higher performing um, tool. And so when we sat down and looked at the features that were coming out of this model, there were features that pretty much made sense to us. And so um, these were things being written in the chart. So a lot of times the narrative descriptions are not in structured data. Um, confused was the number one, the highest uh, coefficient. And so, which was not surprising, followed by altered mental. So a lot of times we'll see like alter, altered mental status, unable to follow commands. So follow commands is number three. And so um, this is usually um, helpful when we can look at the top features and really make sure that um, you know, they make sense clinically. Uh, and in this case, they did. We then looked at, let's take our NLP model and combine it with the EMR model. And so um, we were able to see here when we have both the structured data and the unstructured data, the notes, we're able to end up with a, a higher performing tool. So if you remember, the AUC, the precision accuracy, were all um, lower on the previous performance. And so that combination of structured and unstructured really helps us um, create higher performing tools. And so this is giving, this is just showing how um, the additional lift that we're getting when we add in our NLP. So with our EMR only model, we're on the second version, which we call 1.1. So 1.1 was our initial version. We had done retraining, redeployment, ended up with, and had a nice boost there, ended up with 1.1. One, um, but then when we combine EMR 1.1 with EMR plus uh, natural language processing, we see a nice um, additional lift in the model. And so this is our approach to, as we max out uh, the predictive power of just the structured data, we're able to then layer in our notes and get some additional lift and boost uh, and performance. We're also looking at use cases where we have another dimension, which is bringing in imaging. So structured data, notes, and imaging. And we think there's an opportunity there to even further improve um, the performance of our tools. So um, we're coming up on the last minute here. Just want to thank um, our colleagues at the Mount Sinai Health System, our colleagues at Johnson Labs that we've been partnering with on many of these NLP projects, and our clinical data science team. Um, and so thank you for listening and glad to answer any questions you may have.